In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can build your own custom accordion interaction that includes force navigation. As many of you already know, Adobe Captivate has a series of learning interactions built in, including an accordion interaction, which is quite useful when you wish to chunk out your information into steps or stages. The only problem is, number one, there isn't a lot of ability to customize these interactions. Sure, you can change the colors and you can choose from a few different themes, but generally, if you have an idea in mind that you'd like to include in your accordion interaction, unless it's there already, you really can't build it. The other thing too, is that you're gonna run into stakeholders who want to be able to restrict learners from moving forward in the course until they've clicked on all of these accordion tabs. That's not something the learning interactions can do, and that pretty much dictates that you're gonna to need to build this from scratch for yourself. If you happen to be a free downloads member of my YouTube channel, you can download the project file for this particular video tutorial. Okay, before we get started, for those of you who aren't free download members, let's take a look at what we have on the slide here. So I've created a number of things, I've set up a number of things. Um, here is basically a shape used as a button. And of course, like all multi-state objects in Adobe Captivate, you can really customize these. Let me click on the state view in my properties inspector and just point a couple things out. So the original object is this blue rectangle with some text added. The added object in this case on the normal or default state is this icon, this little plus icon, which I added just to give your learners a visual cue that this is something that they can press. The selected state is an, an addition of a different icon here, almost like a close or an X icon, if you will. This additional white smart shape with a cutout character and some text that's related to this particular step or stage. Now you can recognize the additional objects because they have this red outline around them and the original objects will have blue. I deleted the rollover and the down states for these multi-state uh, shape buttons simply because I found, I found that the rollover and down states kind of interfere with the way this functions. It's up to you if you want to do that. A couple things to keep in mind here with this sort of interaction. If we look at the timeline, the first item needs to be the topmost item. Uh, and it will cover up two, three, and four. So they need to be lower on your stack of objects in the timeline. So item one is at the top, item two is just below that, item three is below two, and item four is at the bottom of your layers on the timeline here. I also have a continue button. Its default is to be not visible in output, so you can see I've clicked on the little eyeball icon in my properties inspector so that it doesn't show up. Because the whole point of force navigation is that we don't want learners to be able to move forward whenever they wish. We only want them to do it once they finish this interaction. My advice would be you'd want to uncheck show playback control in your skin editor. And you may wish to also hide any borders that you might be showing as well. There's a need actually for two different variables for each of the accordion tab items. So for example, when I click on accordion tab one, I need to first of all keep track that I've done that to contribute to whether this whole slide is complete or not. I also need to keep track of whether tab one has been opened or selected or whether it's been closed or unselected, if you will. So we're gonna need a total of eight different variables to keep track of all that stuff. And we're gonna do that now. So we'll click on the project dropdown menu and select variables. I'm gonna click on add new. I'm gonna 
follow sort of the naming convention I typically use. I start off with underscore S01 for slide one. And we're going to call this accordion underscore zero one. I'm going to select all that text using control A and control C on my keyboard. We'll save the first example of this variable and then we'll add using paste and just changing the last little bit there for two, three, and four. Now we're also going to create a uh, variable associated with whether these tabs are open or selected. So I'm just going to put an extra underscore there and we'll call this selected 01. I'm going to copy that as well and we'll add a new version for number two and for tab three and tab four. So now we have all our variables. We can close the variables window. And we can start writing our advanced actions to do all the stuff that we need it to do. So click on your project drop down menu and select advanced actions. We're going to call this S01 underscore accordion underscore 01. This first thing we need to check is we need to check whether or not this accordion tab has already been opened or not. So we're going to use the conditional tab and check the value of our variable that we just created. In this case, S01 accordion selected 01. If it is equal to zero, that means it's not presently selected and we're going to perform the following actions. We're going to first of all update the value of that variable to be equal to one, just because we're going to be changing it from not pressed to selected or pressed, if you will. We're going to change the state of actually all of our accordion tabs. Accordion tab one will be selected and the rest will be normal or not selected, if you will. So we can just quickly do that. And number four, also normal. The last thing we need to do is update the tracking variable that keeps track of if we've ever pressed accordion tab one or not. And that's just simply done with the assign command as well. And we choose accordion zero one and give it a value of one. We need an else section for this advanced action. So in other words, when we press accordion tab one, if it's already open, we need to check for that. So that's if it's not open, we're going to do this. If it's already open, here's the stuff we're going to do here. And this is pretty simple. We're going to change all of our accordion tabs back to their normal state. So we're going to change state of accordion tab one to normal. I can cheat a little bit here. We can copy this and paste it three times. So we end up with four in total and then just change these, the second half of this, uh, these actions to be that. So we've got everything going back to normal. And we also want to make sure that are variables that keep track of whether an item's open or closed or selected or not are also updated back to zero. So we're going to select this literal value of zero and we can do the same thing again and copy it a bunch of times so that we don't have to do as much mouse clicking the second time around. So we'll just make sure we're choosing the right variables selected three and selected four. There we go. So that takes care of the first tab or the first part of this advanced action. And this is what happens when we click any of these tabs, specifically for tab one, but we're going to do kind of the same structure for two, three, and four. We also need to check to see if we're done. So that's going to be done on this second tab which I'm simply going to label check. 
This also is a conditional tab. And we're going to check the value of our tracking variables. That's the one without the selected part in the name here. If they're all equal to one, in other words, we've pressed them all, then we can go ahead and perform an action. And let's just update these. Zero, two, zero, three, and zero, four. So if all four of these are equal to one, we've pressed all of these once, and we're simply going to show the previously hidden continue button right there. That's it. That, that sounds complicated, but it's actually pretty straightforward because the best part of advanced actions in Adobe Captivate is that once I save this, I can now click on this duplicate action button here, make an exact copy of this advanced action. Let's change the action name to S01 Accordion 2. And all we need to do is change a couple of items on the first half of the first tab. So in this case here, we need to work with the selected 02 variable. Same thing here, selected 02. And instead of changing the state of tab 1 to selected and the rest to normal, we're going to change tab 1 to normal and the second one will be selected. We also need to do our tracking variable for accordion 2. And we can update that action, click OK, and we're good. Now we have two advanced actions. Let's duplicate it again. Change the action name to 03 instead of 02. And we're working with the 03 selected variable here and here. And again, because it's the third item, we're going to make that appear selected and the rest of them normal. And our tracking variable for 03 is there. Update action. Click OK. And we'll duplicate it one last time to cover the possibility of the fourth tab. And again, we just change this a little bit. Everything in the else section and the check section remains the same, so you don't need to touch those at all. And we just need to make these small changes here. And there we go. Oops, wrong variable. Don't make my mistake. <laughs> so there we go, update action. So now we have all four advanced actions for all four of our buttons, and it will take care of the force navigation for you. One other advanced action you might need if you allow your learners to return to this slide after visiting this slide once, you might need an on enter reset advanced action. It's very simple to do. We're just going to plus to create a new action and we're going to call this slide 01 underscore enter. And all that we need to do is assign our selected variables with the literal value of zero. The reason for this is that when you return to this slide, all of these will return to their normal state, and we just want to make sure that the variables match the condition of what these items will look like. So selected two. Again, I did the trick where we just copied it, and now I'm just renaming these selected three and these finicky little captivate drop downs here, selected four. So this will return everything back to normal. Let's save this as an action. Click OK, click close. So the on enter of the slide is done here from your properties inspector. If it looks different than this, just click in your scrap area and then you can select execute advanced action and we'll do S01 enter. And now we can select each of our buttons and go to actions, execute advanced actions, accordion one, 
execute advanced actions, accordion two. Same thing for number three. And same thing for number four. Once you have this, by the way, I literally can copy this slide and then paste it into any other project, not the same project, any other project, and all those variables and advanced actions will come with it. All you need to do is change the text, the images, and the content on your screen, and it will totally work for you. Let's test this out and make sure that it works as expected here. Okay. So we can click the first one. It shows us the content. If I click it again, it closes it for you. If I click on two, it shows me the second one. If I click on one again, it closes two and then shows one. And again, this will work. And of course, once I click on all four, the continue button is available. And then I can move forward with the rest of the project. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.